Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about the Godot game engine, specifically about Godot 4.4, the little version that could. Honestly, Godot 4.4 is shaping up to be my release. It keeps adding new features that I absolutely love, and they just fixed one of the things that, in all honesty, I hate the most about Godot. It's a little thing, but we're going to see it in action right now. So right now, what you see, this is Godot 4.4 Dev 5. So we're not even at beta yet, by the way. I've actually even done two videos already, a sneak peek and then a follow-up about Dev 4 and 5 about new features coming in the next version of Godot. But they've just dropped Godot Dev 6 with this new feature that I absolutely love. We're going to go ahead and preview it. So right now we're in Dev 5 that does not have this new feature. And let's say you add a new camera into the world, like this camera right here. And I want to place this camera. What I have to do is this finicky process of kind of setting it up where I think it is. And then I click over here to preview. And I'm like, uh, am I there yet? All right, preview. No, it's not there yet. Pretty much every other game engine does this better, if I'm honest. Now, there are ways around it. What you can do is you can come in here and say, all right, split viewport right here. I can pick my camera in action over here and then go to preview and have the second one set up as a permanent view into the world like this. This works um, and it's a... Uh, you know, it is definitely a workaround, but it's also kind of a kludgy hack. Uh, and it's just something that I find a little bit frustrating. Well, thankfully, with the next version of Godot, Godot Dev 6, that you see in front of you right now, well, this has a magical new feature. This is a little thing, but it is just life-changing, in my opinion. It's one of those things that, you know, when you work with the engine on a daily basis, it'll just make a big difference. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. So select up here, go up here, add a camera to our scene and place it in the world. Now what you'll notice, again, this is a little thing, but over there, there is this preview of the camera. As I'm moving the camera around, we see the preview over here in the inspector view. Again, it's a little thing, but those little things make such a giant difference. This little thing, along with the feature ability to actually come in here and favorite and unfavorite property, so they show up at the top in the favorite section, that in the camera preview, those two things are going to really optimize my workflow in Godot. These are absolutely lovely new features. By the way, there's a couple of other things in Dev6 uh, that we've got added in. There is a brand new uh, CSG system. So let's just head on over here quickly. Uh, so this has been replaced. So we'll filter down here. So we'll add something in a CSG combiner like so. To that, we will add a uh, box. So where is our box? Box 3D like this. So here is our box combiner, like so. And then we can add in another box, like this. And you use this for doing quick, rapid level design stuff. So right here, what you're doing is, this is called constructive solid geometry. And it's basically a collection of Booleans for quickly creating geometry in your world. So what I can do here is select this guy. I'll switch his operation out to being subtraction instead. And then what you'll see is you can do quick, modeling this way. This is the way it used to always be done for modeling for uh, Doom and Quake early on. So there's this CSG system in place. Now this has always been in place, but what they've done is they've completely replaced the underlying library behind it. So you should get more stable results. Let's try something a little bit more complicated. We'll add a cylinder in like so. Let's move our cylinder into our object this way. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and scale that that way and scale it that way. All right, and this way and move it back here into our shape like this. And this should just basically give you like more precise, better cuts here. So again, you can do union, intersection, or subtraction, and there is your resulting object. And you'll notice it interacts with the world, shadows out accordingly. So select the top level object, and there you get. By the way, you can actually export this out to something like uh, Blender or Max or Meyer or whatever. You can export this out as GLTF and use this as basically like white boxing or prototyping your level uh, and then finish it somewhere else. So the big thing here is the underlying library that is doing all of this stuff has been updated. So honestly, unlike the other ones I've covered in the past, there's not a ton in this release. There's a, again, this is the big one. This is the reason why I made a video because this is something I absolutely find essential. I actually showcased a plugin I will show you in just a second that kind of gives you this functionality in a different way because I've always thought Blender was missing this one. So this is a lovely new feature. Uh, we have new debug customizations for um, collision shape 3D. So you've now got debug fill and debug color properties. That's been a much requested feature that people will like. Again, the new CSG library uh, has 
been replaced uh, with the Manifold library. Basically, there was nobody maintaining the old library, so the new one should just be better performing, better su sustainability going forward. We've got runtime loading of WAV files. This uh, adds parity to the Aug Vorbis file support that's already in there. So if you need to load in these assets at runtime instead of design time, you can now do so. And this one is probably going to have uh, usefulness for some people is you can now extend curves past normalization. So it doesn't have to be zero to one. Like here you can see it's up to going up to zero to 26.92. Uh, and then some um, tutorial, uh, some uh, uh, utilities there for handling temporary files. And I can actually speak again. So I did actually mention this in the past. Uh, there is another add-on out there called the Godot Little Camera Preview Add-on. So if you want the same functionality, but you're not using uh, you know, the newest version of Godot, there is an add-on out there that gives this kind of functionality to you. I did call it the missing piece. Again, this is one of those things that in Godot, I have found annoying for a very long time. Uh, so there is a plugin that fixes this. It is available in the Godot Asset Library. Again, it's called the Godot Little Camera Preview Add-on. And you can see it in action right here. So when the add-on is enabled, like so, it gives you the ability to preview your camera without having to click preview up here. Instead, your preview is down here. And you can actually snap it around to different corners resize it and so on. So this functionality exists in a different form than what we were seeing here. But again, uh, this does what I need. This does what I want. So I'll give her just suggestions over here. So this camera preview up here, mwah, chef's kiss. Again, there are a ton of things coming in Godot 4.4, little things, quality of life things, but they are just good quality of life. I love quality of life things over top of brand new features that nobody is going to use or that are too buggy to use, etc. So this one is a nice addition to the list. So let me know what you think. By the way, if you do want this functionality uh, today, you could get kind of the same thing with that plugin I mentioned earlier on. So have you also struggled with the camera preview system in Godot? Do you like this better? Let me know in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.